good morning in the last session we have discussed about the newton euler formulation in this session we will discuss about the euler lagrange formulation so before going to the euler lagrange formulation we should understand what are the two basic differences between both the approaches so we have under dynamics these two approaches newton euler approach and euler lagrange approach so the first approach basically every variable is being treated as a vector quantity so like we have displacement velocity acceleration force torque whereas in euler lagrange approach every variable is being treated as a scalar quantity like we have kinetic energy potential energy total energy of the system the second difference is in the newton euler approach it is based on force moment balance whereas the euler lagrange approach is based on the energy balance so these are the two key differences between the two approaches so let's go ahead with the euler lagrange approach so in this first of all we need to define one quantity which is called as Lagrangian which is equal to the total kinetic energy of the system minus total potential energy. So before going ahead we need to understand the functional dependence of all these three quantities. So first of all regarding the potential energy we know the potential energy is a function of uh, position as well as time of each body. So where Q represents the position of each body whereas the kinetic energy is a function of velocity as well as time. So in order to completely understand the functional dependence of uh, kinetic energy let's take one example so let's take uh, one two link uh, manipulator having angle theta 1 theta 2 length l1 l2 let's say mass m1 m2 so the coordinates of the first link are let's say x1 y1 and the coordinates of the tip are let's say x2 y2 so we have x2 equal to l1 cos of theta 1 plus l2 cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 and y2 we have l1 sine of theta 1 plus l2 sine of theta 1 plus theta 2 so let's take their derivatives so we have x2 dot equal to minus l1 s1 theta 1 dot minus l2 s1 2 theta 1 2 dot where theta 1 2 represents theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot similarly we have y2 dot equal to l1 c1 theta 1 dot plus l2 c1 2 theta 1 2 dot so now in order to find out the kinetic energy of the body 2 we need to take the square of this x2 dot square plus y2 dot square and multiply it by the mass of the body 2 that is m so here we can clearly see because the kinetic energy contains the terms x2 dot y2 dot and both x2 dot and y2 dot are having dependence on theta 1 theta 2 theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot so in nutshell we can say it depends upon q position coordinates of all the links and q dot the velocity of all the links and also on t so basically the functional dependence of kinetic energy can be found here and we can write that the kinetic energy depends upon on position velocity as well as time so that's why we can write this lagrange as q q dot t kinetic energy as q q dot t and potential energy as q t so this is a functional dependence of each one of the term and finally we have the lagrange equation which can be written as that d by dt of del l by del q y dot minus del l by del q y plus del r by del q y dot equal to capital Q i where i goes from 1 up to n where n is the degrees of freedom of the system. Here Q i represents the vector of uh, generalized coordinates. Capital Q i represents the vector of uh, generalized forces and this r represents Rayleigh's dissipation function and this r is responsible for all the energy being dissipated by the system this may be because of friction this may be because of air drag this may be any other reason of damping so this is called as a Rayleigh's dissipation function which means that the total amount of energy being dissipated by the system next we need to understand why we have used this special word called as generalized because in real life systems most of the systems today are mechatronic system which involves its contribution from mechanical side electrical side electronic side computer side so in order to find out the overall transfer function of the system we need to study each subsystem which may belong to mechanical domain electrical domain electronics domain so from each domain the vector q represents the equivalent displacement variable so it is let's say if we are having a three degree of freedom system so it's q1 t q2 t q3 t where q1 q2 q3 let's say represents three different subsystems so q1 may be having linear displacement q2 may be 
rotary displacement and let's say q3 may represent the charge so over here you can see all are a representation of a displacement and all three units need not to be same so if we see over here the units of uh, xt are in meters the units of uh, theta are in radians and the units of charge are in ohms even though all three units are different but all three represents displacement in their respective domains that's why it this Q represents vector of generalized displacements. Similarly, we have uh, this capital Q, which represents the vector of generalized forces. So like the way we have, uh, we can have a force, we can have a torque, we can have the EMF, where we know the units of force are Newton, the units of torque are Newton meter, and then units of uh, EMF may be volts. Now let's try to understand this uh, Euler-Lagrange approach with the help of one example. We'll take the same example as taken in the last session and we'll try to see whether we have solved this problem using newton euler approach or by using euler lagrange approach the dynamic model or equations of motion of this system will turn out to be same so let's take this uh, two degree of freedom system where m1 and m2 represents the masses of two bodies and there are interconnected by three springs k1 k2 k3 and three dampers c1 c2 c3 so first of all let's try to calculate the total kinetic energy of the system which is equal to half m1 x1 dot square plus half m2 x2 dot square then we have the potential energy of the system the potential energy we know having two components potential energy due to elastic deformation and potential energy due to the position of the body in the gravitational field here both the bodies are lying on the ground so we have only the elastic potential energy component which is because of the amount of energy stored by each spring as strain energy so we have half k1 x1 square because it's an independent spring one end is fixed then we have half k2 x1 minus x2 square because it's a coupled spring connected between both the bodies and finally we have half k3 x2 square so this is the total potential energy of the system and then we can calculate the lagrange as kinetic energy minus potential energy which is equal to half m1 x1 dot square plus half m2 x2 dot square minus half k1 x1 square minus half k2 x1 minus x2 square minus half k3 x2 square and finally we have the Rayleigh's dissipation function which is equal to the total amount of energy being dissipated by the system so it is equal to the amount of energy dissipated by the first system half c1 x1 dot square plus half c2 x1 dot minus x2 dot square plus half c3 x2 dot square so after calculating these terms we can now apply the Lagrange equations so we have the Lagrange equation as d by dt of del L by del qi dot minus del L by del qi plus del r by del qi dot equal to capital qi so let's take i index equal to 1 and we know that the q vector of generalized coordinates have q1 q2 which is equal to x1 x2 so for i equal to 1 we have q1 as equal to x1 so first of all let's try to calculate del l by del x1 dot which is equal to m1 x1 dot then no contribution from second term not from third fourth and fifth so next we have total derivative which is equal to d by dt of del l by del x1 dot which is should be equal to m1 x1 double dot then comes the second term which is should be equal to del l by del x1 so if we see the lagrangian the first term does not have any x contribution zero second term again zero third term depends upon x1 so that's equal to minus k1 x1 fourth term also depends upon x1 so which is equal to minus k2 into x1 minus x2 into 1 and the fifth term does not depend upon this we can simplify this term and can write as minus k1 plus k2 times x1 plus k2 x2 so next we have del r by del x1 dot which can be written as c1 x1 dot plus c2 
into x1 dot minus x2 dot into 1 plus 0 and it can be simplified as c1 plus c2 into x1 dot minus c2 into x2 dot and the q1 dot finally can be written as f1 of t so we have evaluated all the terms now we can plug in all these terms in the Lagrange equation so that will give us m1 x1 double dot minus del l by del x1 that will give you plus k1 plus k2 into x1 minus k2 x2 then we have del r by del q1 dot that should give us c1 plus c2 times x1 dot minus c2 x2 dot equal to q1 that is equal to f1 of t so this will give us the equation of motion of the first part now we can do the same steps for i equal to 2 so for i equal to 2 we know q2 is equal to x2 so first of all we have del l by del q2 dot which should be equal to del l by del x2 dot that we can see the first term 0 second term we have m2 x2 dot and we have third fourth and fifth term are also 0 because none of the term will depend upon x2 dot so next we have the total derivative d by dt of del l by del x2 dot which is equal to m2 x2 double dot next we have del l by del x2 which should be equal to first term 0 second term we have 0 third term also we have 0 fourth term we have minus k2 into x1 minus x2 into minus 1 and then minus k3 x2 so we can simplify and combine the terms so we have k2 x1 and then minus k2 plus k3 times x2 next we have del r by del q2 dot which is equal to del r by del x2 dot and it can be written as first term is 0 second term we have c2 into x1 dot minus x2 dot and then minus 1 and finally third term we have c3 x2 dot so which we can simplify and write as minus c2 x1 dot plus c2 plus c3 into x2 dot and finally we have q2 t is equal to f2 so again we have calculated all the terms and we can plug in all these values in the Lagrange equation so which will give us m2 x2 double dot minus k2 x1 plus k2 plus k3 times x2 minus c2 x1 dot plus c2 plus c3 x2 dot should be equal to f2 so this is the equation of motion of the second body so we have the first equation as m1 x1 double dot plus c1 plus c2 times x1 dot minus c2 x2 dot then we have k1 plus k2 times x1 minus k2 x2 equal to f1 of t that's first equation and then we have the second equation as m2 x2 double dot minus c2 x1 dot plus c2 plus c3 times x2 dot then minus k2 x1 plus k2 plus k3 times x2 is equal to f2 now we can write this in matrix forms so where the structure of equation is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx should be equal to f of t so where x represents the vector of uh, generalized coordinates should be 
having size 2 by 1 because we are having 2 degrees of freedom and f should be equal to f1 f2 the external force acting on both the bodies so let's write this in the matrix form so we can first write this uh, matrix followed by the vector of four generalized accelerations then we have x1 dot x2 dot then we have x1 x2 which should be equal to f1 t f2 t so if we now see the first equation and we will try to write this in the as the first row of this matrix so we can see that there is a contribution from x1 double dot so that will be m1 but there is no contribution from the x2 double dot so that entry is 0 so next we have x1 dot which is equal to c1 plus c2 and x2 dot is minus c2 and then we have k1 plus k2 for x1 and then minus k2 for x2 and then f1 is over here in the right hand side similarly now we can go to equation number 2 so we can see that from the equation number 2 which should come as second row so there is no contribution from x1 double dot m2 for x2 double dot so then we have minus c2 times x1 dot c2 plus c3 times x2 dot and then we have minus k2 k2 plus k3 so this is the dynamic model in matrix form where we know that this is called as the inertia matrix this is called as the damping matrix and the last one is called as the stiffness matrix all these three matrices having the dimension 2 by 2 or in general we can say their dimension is n by n where n is the degrees of freedom of the system so we have 2 by 2 over here 2 by 2 over here and 2 by 2 over here and finally we can see that this is the same dynamic model which we have received in the previous session using newton older approach so as mentioned earlier also that equation of motion or dynamic model is a property of the system and it should not depend upon any initial condition any assumptions or any approach being taken into account if we have followed both the approaches in a systematic manner we should end up with the same result thank you